What we're going to be doing is finishing off a unit of these Baratheon Stagnites. It's from the Co Mini or Not Song of Ice and Fire game. You're seeing one of them right here. And let's see, he's number two, so he's actually meant to go, whoops, wrong way, wrong tray. Wrong way, wrong tray. Well, anyway, if he were in the right tray, he'd be going round about there. You can see we've got Scopey basing here, all in between. And it's, it's that, what is that, the, the whole stag thing with Baratheons right now. We've got ourselves rest of the unit here we've been working on this well I have maybe not you guys I can see each one has a little bit of a different design on the base and these metals were kinda interesting because they had a lot of purple in them as you can see especially here on the the armor there to see lots and lots of purple and then of course the the yellow Baratheon theme so what we're gonna do is we're going to continue with some of that freehand. You can see that I've started that here on some of the guys. It's fairly basic. You, when you're doing freehand across an entire army, what you try and do is create something that looks as good as possible, but it's, it's something you can easily repeat. Hey, Armored Wolf is in the house in Monubanes. I'm sorry it's been so long. Uh, <laughs> Well, one or two things have happened. I mean, it's just a couple of little things. But XSplit stopped allowing me to do Twitch anymore. Basically, it wouldn't let me do any of the authorization. So I could not do XSplit for Twitch. And that was pretty devastating because all my stuff is set up to do Twitch, YouTube, everything on XSplit. The whole shoot and match. So that wasn't very fun. So I have spent... Oh, Armored Wolf knows just how long I spent trying to get this in OBS. And yeah, that, that we're coming to you live via OBS right now. I'm just glad this is working because I tried doing a Facebook Live and that didn't really go so well. Now part of it, I didn't realize that you have to have a, a Facebook page. You can't just go live on Facebook as if you were doing it via Facebook. So I have no idea what kind of alerts. There may be alerts that pop here, up here, or something weird happening. I have no idea. Now did I do the front on I did do the front on him. So let's let's see if we can do that here on these guys too. Now I got a couple of them that haven't already been completed to this level yet and over the course of the next few hours. We'll probably get to those guys, but for now I'm just gonna get to these things here. And you can see it starts out just a couple of parallel lines and then we're gonna backfill that. So I'm gonna get him off to the side where I can see him. Oh, color-wise so we are using one Reaper color here. It is the blue liner. Oh, hey, Bethany, how's it going? Uh, again, I, I don't think I got a chance to tell you. Oh, here's uh, some of the Pro Crew we're using uh, the the po pictures you posted on Facebook of your army display board and such. I think you had just jumped away when I said, "Hey, I got to see those. They look amazing." So now I get to actually tell you just normal. Those were really amazing because I'm a sucker for display boards. Well, and painted armies. You know me. All about the display boards and painted armies. So what we're actually, what I'm trying to do here is revive a, I'm going to be reviving a painting, army painting series that was stopped last December. That was the Baratheon, oh what the heck are those guys called, Wardens. That's right. And I've got one of those guys sitting around here somewhere, I'll show you, at some point. I think I was, oh, I was, I was at the color test figure. I just finished that. I was just about to do the rest of the unit. So I've done the basing video. And I was just about to get into the rest of the unit when some stuff happened. But I'm going to actually revive that one, get back into it. Well, part of it is the rest of the Barathians have to be finished as a commission. So there's that. <laughs> that That's probably the primary reason, like, 
eighty percent of the reason. But it is possible. Oh, seven, seven witches would. It's just for the six crypt slayers. It's about two of eight. Oh, sorry. Well, at least I got a chance to say that was great to you in person. Well, sort of in person, digitally in person. But thanks for stopping by. I'll see ya. So yeah, we did the the basing video. That <clears throat> actually that movement tray that you saw that is from the basing video. And then we did the color test figure, but oh my gosh, since it's been since September, I'm actually going to basically add a sixth episode, and we're going to do a second color test figure, because I'm pretty sure at the time I did that, you didn't have the transparent paints from Pro Acryl. So we're going to get into that. Gee whiz, I almost forgot. Jeez, how can we... I know I had this, though. I know I had Faded Ultramarine, the most powerful color in the history of colors. Well, it may have a rival now. There is Faded Plum. That's brand new. One of the new Adeptic... Well, sort of Adepticon colors. So we'll just... We'll keep working through the, the freehand here. The banner is going to have, obviously, some more designs on it. Now, I'm hoping that you can see in the video here, at least on the screen, that in some of the yellows you've got highlights that are, well, shadows that are more tan. See there, it's almost a little bit more of a reddish purple type color, and in some it's almost more of a blue. I think this one, yeah, can you see some of the almost the bluish, well, more like mid-tones in there? Let's set you off to the side. And as we work around, then I'll show you the two the two that have already been started. Now, of course, the, the liner paints aren't just for, well, drawing lines. They do it really, really well. They pretty much do it better than basically any other kind of paint. Uh, the, the transparents are sort of close. If you're looking for, I guess, the next closest thing after those Reaper liners... Because look at this, it's, you can make this just so thin, and it, and it really just glides along here. It doesn't take a whole lot of water to make it flow, which is really handy. Because then you put a lot of water in it to make it flow, it's going to have a tendency to bleed out on you and do weird things, especially on a surface that undulates quite so much as that. So I'm also getting used to a new screen. Well, getting used to several things. The screen itself, physically, is in an entirely different location. I, it's got to be about 8 inches higher up than it has been for the last, oh, two and a half years. So I've got to get used to that. And I've also got to get used to what Streamlabs OBS screens look like. So I already started looking for some things and went, um, what's that? And then the time I looked up there and said, where did it go? So, yeah, that that's if there's a little bit of a delay, that's, well, it could be, you know, frame dropping or something like that. Not that I can see that anymore. That was the other nice thing about Exploit is I could really easily see if there was frames dropping. So if weird things happen... Just let me know. Hey, I'm just glad the sound seems to be working. At least I think it is. Because that was the bugaboo the first time we tried this. And somehow there was another basically Twitch window that was open. And it was playing somebody else's video. Not sure how the heck that happened. Not quite sure what, what was going on there. That was... That was a weird moment. We were turning off all kinds of things. I know there was also the YouTube Live where somehow the button, the mute button, had gotten pressed on my microphone. And that killed the <laughs> that killed the stream right there because I'm what the heck is going on? Why can't anybody hear my sound? Now you're going to get a whole lot of inside baseball here on what Windows updates can do. And boy, oh boy. I really hope there's none of those coming anytime soon. 
they have a tendency to sabotage your mics. Now I don't, and I know in OBS, Kathy has to do some resetting of things every time. Every time you've got one of those updates going, so you can see we're just they're still in the the double line mode. We're just about there, ready to move on to the next phase of this. But to get to each one of these, you can see the, especially here. Yeah, look, you can really see how that pattern kind of goes hand in hand right there. And like I said, I've got that that's part of the painting series. I think that was series mm, 12, maybe. So you can see here, this is basically still just primer at this point. And we've hit it with some of the dark brown mixed with some of the blue. So I haven't really done a whole bunch on this guy. And there's another one, too that we'll work on but for now here let's grab one of these guys and let's play a little bit here now we're gonna look at this and what we have are some elongated diamond shapes in there it's real simple stuff real simple stuff nothing to it because well you have to do this not just 12 times but three four four times 12 times now best off you start in the center because what you don't want to do is have all your free hands sort of crowding off to one side so I'm going to start in the center with one of these elongated diamonds like so and then I'm just going to go a dot here and a dot here here a dot there a dot and those dots it's kind of like what they used to do with Celtic knotwork so I'm going to build the the diamond shape around the right here around the dot now interestingly enough ah oh, see that now that's the interesting thing that OBS does is my window is so tiny I can't really read the chat that I'm used to reading however the OBS chat is off to the side and I can see that okay I just gotta get used to work looking at different places here so just bear with me as I get used to that okay so we've got our diamond shapes I, I could get those closer together but we'll just leave more of that and then we're gonna not quite play connect the diamonds we'll just do this and then there's a little bit of a flourish right here and I think we kept that pretty darn simple yep sometimes just a little bit of a gesture is all it takes because remember these guys are all ranked up so people just they're not necessarily going to see it so look, just a quick simple little it's gonna replicate that that leaf motif how's that sound Okay, we got to do another one over here. Sometimes it'll be tough for you to see the weapon gets in the way or whatever. Good enough. And then while I have this color too, let's see, actually, here, let's do something. Let's do something here. This is a little bit of correction that's going to happen. Because really, that should be a sleeve and we'll we'll show you what the impact of that has so sleeve here let's get a little bit of some of our lighter yellow in there and I think you can see what's happening but if we're gonna put that there we also have to reflect that into the armor as well I was just having the conversation earlier today it was all about uh, metallic metals. Oh, see, another reflection over here. Another reflection over here. And the, the figure pretty much tells you where where your colors are going to go. All right, because you can't have all this yellow right here, and you can't have shiny metal armor without some of that yellow then being reflected onto it. So it in some ways it makes the decision for you you don't have to agonize over it 
an example is over there see on the the leg there well that is why we've got some of this here, let's tone that down a touch see over there on that like right in there right where the brush is pointing that is why we've got yellow there because well you can't have all this yellow literally right on top of the armor and not somehow show up it's like was there some kind of magic color barrier that somehow prevents the yellow from ever reflecting against the armor we I see it all the time with object source lighting they have this sword this flaming bright sword and it's right next to the armor and they've taken all the time effort and everything else to do this flaming sword and then somehow again <laughs> the the armor is completely unaffected by this flaming sword that's two inches away from it now that's not to scare people away from doing the yeah, let's just position this here not to scare people away from doing the the freehand or the object source lighting or whatever just keep it in mind that's all just as you're working with it think, oh yeah you know what I've got all this yellow here I got to reflect this on the armor or in the case of the the Lannisters and I've got a bunch of YouTube videos on them bunch of YouTube videos on them and actually I've got pictures yes I have pictures of the Hulbert so this is another thing that I can't go to the blog here it won't let me load up my blog website or do anything with that but what we got is these guys to those for uh, just for fun over the course of time here because we want to stay entertained well I do and I am not quite sure just how many people will dive into this because it's been a while since I've been able to do one of these so that's that's understandable here's a bit more now what I've actually really focused on of late and I think the folks familiar with me have been focused on those oils quite a bit. Part of the reason was I was already making those, my homemade oils, I was making them for Adepticon anyway, for my class. And then I've started to film videos with those. And we've already ventured into the Splintered Fang Army Painting Series. I'm going to be filming episode, episode 3 tomorrow. We did the color test figure. A little later, we'll show you that. I just I want to keep going here with my friends. Just, look at that. Just a quick little basic thing. Nothing fancy. Because the, the more elaborate you make this, the more people are going to look at that and not the rest of the figure. So always best to just keep things under control see look at that just a suggestion we didn't even complete the entire thing now I could do a, a stag thing on here we'll set him aside maybe we do that so we'll just set him aside that is the the unit champ leader whatever so we might do more stuff on him oh it's bedtime for Munubanes. no problem now of course this Oh gosh, I don't think I have the this whatever that'll let this stay on forever, but you can tomorrow watch it from the beginning when it's a, a little bit better hour for you. I think for two weeks, right, it stays up here. Now, I don't know. See, this is the other benefit of uh, my XSplit. 
is it would be recording this and then I could actually just quite literally turn this into a YouTube tutorial just with the raw footage sadly I don't think that's happening I guess I'd have to actually hit the record button physically here but I don't know what would happen to the stream so I'm not going to hit that button <laughs> and it is literally a red button so I'm not pressing the red button which is unusual for me because I'm kind of known as the red button presser type at least when it comes to painting miniatures but man I've been burned on way too many technology things in the last Oof. just asked armored wolf because yeah it, it's been interesting to say the least trying to overcome whatever the heck is going on with XSplit don't know why and it is a bummer because again it is so much easier for me to use oh well I guess we I guess we forgot to do our lines on this let's just do that now but as I do that I'm also gonna look and see like here there's just not enough darks in some places look at here I can make those fingers have a little bit more separation I can have some stronger darks over here so I try to the usual what I always say is you think globally but you work locally you still have to think about this as a whole and that's what we're gonna do we'll get back to our little diamond shapes here I don't think I know I've done well obviously freehand YouTube live type things but I don't think it's been this many figures at once because basically there's well there's a dozen in each unit and we've got the one color test figure done so that still leaves me with 11 actually this was supposed to happen last night the live stream when I had far less of all the armor and everything else done on these guys but the weather did not cooperate with that desire so that didn't happen keep going again this just this quick little it's just a little gesture right here of something now here you can see that the actually did throw a little bit of purple in there but you can see that's a little bit more blue and you'll you'll see that in action when I get to those final two guys that really don't have much paint on them yet I just I want to progress on these guys a little bit more and we'll also see what we can do maybe freehand wise on the banner Now I'm gonna throw. Can I do two? No, I I think I can only get two diamonds in here. The reason is so we're gonna put one here and another one over there. Go back around this way. Yeah, I do believe. Well, that's probably why there was all the crazy weather because the temperature I think actually jumped I don't want to say 50 degrees but I, it's at least somewhere between 38 and 40 degrees warmer than the last time I was recording stuff now I'm fairly sure it was only about 40 degrees or so a couple nights ago and then today it was 80 something degrees which is insane I mean, it's not unusual. We've had 89 degree days in March. We've also had six inches of snow in April, <clears throat> which actually wasn't all that long ago. I know last year we had at least a two, three, four inch snowstorm. So 
for all the folks here that are thinking, yep, it's time to break out the shorts and all that other kind of stuff. Well, might want to woe that thing. And actually, here's another case where we're going to backtrack a bit. Now, let just see if I can't. Yeah, we need to get some yellow here. So we're going to do that. Just like we did on the other one. It's a different figure, but we had the, the same thing. There was... I just didn't see this sleeve here. Guess what? If you put that there, you can see we just reflected a little bit of yellow into there. Ah, and same here, too. No, let's not have it quite so... quite so light there. Another thing, too, so when you are doing that the reflection of stuff onto the armor. It's like any kind of a reflection. I was always taught this. Jeez, I was painting landscapes. So let, let's say you got your, your mountain landscape, right? And you're going to reflect your mountain into your water. It should be a few grades darker, right? A little bit darker, a little bit more dull, not quite as bright color wise. Because it's not a perfect mirror. Oh, Bethany's back. Do not have the streaming ability to watch 50% of the time. I'm just like, oh, I would imagine, well, I'm, I'm surprised that more people are still able to do all their live stuff because, I mean, this is what everybody's doing. They're, they're watching their Netflix. They're, they're doing their work from their home offices. They're conducting the meetings and all that kind of stuff. So I'm I'm kind of just glad that there is still internet at this point. I was thinking it could get a little bit tricky. It could get tricky with all the demands on it that, well, and, and less people necessarily working to keep it going. Now, of course, this is, this really should be a low traffic time, just in general, at least in my area for internet, but I don't know, everything, everything might just be different these days. Well, hopefully the, the internet starts to cooperate somewhat. I know here the the Wi-Fi has been extra weird. I mean, my phone has been rendered practically almost useless at times, depending on where I am in the house. It's not like it was fantastic in other parts of the house, but it wasn't just totally unusable. I think that is definitely one of the consequences of all the massively increased demand. Can you, okay, you can see that. Like I said, I have got to get used to all of these new settings. And it even looks like the the Streamlabs, even with my camera settings, it, it's kind of created its own. So it's not like what I have in XSplit. And it's wanting to do some weird things with it. All right, there's that one. Here's another one here. And then just to, to do something a little bit different, we'll get to those other guys that need their color that haven't been done to this point yet. I figured I just, well, and I think most people would think it weird that I just wanted something kind of casual to, to start off with just to see how this was all going to work. Most people wouldn't necessarily call freehand on a half a, well, a dozen guys basically. Just a light little exercise. It's now this diamond pattern. It's not entirely unrelated to what I did on the, the Lannisters. It, it's amazing how much you can sort of replicate or take a design and make it work for. If you tweak it a little bit, you can make it work for different armies. So here's another case where I'm just gonna strengthen some darks. With the blue liner. I'm also going to go in. Actually, I might just do that too. Because I got that right there. Some unadulterated 
bright ivory. I'm actually going to throw some light highlights on these guys too. So just humor me while I do that. Oh, even at the lowest rates, not possible. Sorry about that. Yep, you too. Stay safe. Here's a bit more. This is the. Yeah, this is uh, I think the last one here before we'll do some some of those highlights. There's a little more. Now I have absolutely all I know right now about Streamlabs OBS is just the rawest. Okay, here's how I can get my graphics in there. Here's how I get my camera and my microphone, and then. How do I press go? That's that's about the level that this is at here. I have no alerts or anything like that. Now apparently that's supposed to be easier in OBS. XSplit, not so hot with that. The other thing that's going to be interesting now, that if it is suddenly going to be go from basically darn near sleet and snow to 80 degrees as always that's going to have an impact on the paint believe it or not my, my homemade wet palette here that you're seeing that came about because of it just got so hot and then it got it was just so rainy that the fans we had to have fans on all the time and it was it was drying out the paint before I could even get the brush to it. It was already drying on the palette. So that that was why I made the wet palette. It wasn't to for the well, the standard purpose I guess you would think of for a wet palette. No, it was more a little more survival than that. A little bit more of a survival thing than that. Okay, so we've got that going now. What am I talking about by these See these, again, it's that chain of lights. See how that goes right down the armor there? I want to put some of those on these guys. Darn near forgot about that. So I'm just going to grab some of this, get it a little bit closer to me here so I can use that. I want to make sure I'm in the right spot here. Now I have to keep in mind with the Pro Acryl lighter colors like the yellow the white whatever those things are going to cover like crazy it's not like the usual yellows and whites so something you want to keep in mind you're not going to need to go back over it several times or any of those sort of things just want to keep that in mind so again we're thinking a chain of lights See, that does not have that brightest highlight. It's got some lighter colors, but not the brightest. It does a couple of things. It also creates a hard edge. And it's those hard edges that really give you the sense of something that's metallic. Do we have, yeah, we got some there. So yeah, well, just this is something else that I realize that I still have to do here yet is some of these brighter lights. So I promise we'll get to those two new guys eventually here. But where is that's not the same. I'm looking for the same pose. Yeah, so you see each one we have we did a little something different with the armor there. Certainly, oh yeah, this one definitely needs some of our, oh, and even here, again, chain of, thinking about a chain of highlights, boom, along there. And I might even, yeah, I'm going to throw some lighter highlights on the scale male here. Or the dragon scale, or which, however you want to refer to it. Almost puts me in mind of painting my Easterlings. Which 
Now that's the other thing I've got to get back to is painting some of my Lord of the Rings terrain so that I can try and do some battle reports for you guys. Because, well, yes, I know we're, we're painting the song Ice and Fire right now. But I've been doing plenty of Lord of the Rings, as anybody who knows me, they know. I'd just do a million army painting series on Lord of the Rings if I could. But we do the, the War Cry stuff. I'm already on my second War Cry series. Yeah, I've got five Lord of the Rings painting series. Yeah, I've got five of those guys. All right, we'll move on to our next one here. This one's a little bit easier because it's got a pretty clear defined edge right there. Let's hit a couple of those scales. Yeah, this is definitely the army of hammers. They're just everybody's got hammers. Uh, there's I forget what the heck the name of the whatever the oh, the guardians or something. The guys that have the double hammers. That I remember that unit being really insanely difficult to rank up. So I don't know if I wrote down my numbers on the bottom of the bases. When I first started prepping those guys, I hope I did. Because that was some serious... I was it Jenga, Tetris, whatever it is, where you're... A puzzle. That was a one heck of a puzzle, getting those 12 guys to fit on there. Yeah, we'll keep working with our... Right away, actually, that might just have to be a sleeve over there. It looks, it's weird that there's, there's sleeves in some areas, like on the left arm, but then on the right arm where there should sort of be a sleeve as well. There is not one. That's confusing. Not quite sure why. And then, of course, these are... The poses are, are pretty interesting, but ultimately these are one-piece gaming figures so there's definitely you got mold lines in weird places you you do sometimes fight these guys a little bit so I'm just finding myself some of these brighter highlights here like there yeah <clears throat> because of the shape of the helmet that's why it's that linear thing that goes down like so now we'll hit this guy. He's I think some of these do have some like this one here is way better off with his brighter highlights. We're much closer here and again the the chain of highlights it starts here, goes to here, goes to here, down there and right down through the toe. Yeah, this one's pretty good on its on its brightest highlights. So we don't have to do too much here. Except I do want to get some again some of these linear linear figures or things going on right here on the figure. See we've got a pretty decent chain of highlights there. <clears throat> that axe there, I almost have to actually tone that down a bit, so we are gonna do something like that. Just knock that down a bit. And that's the the other nice thing about blue liner. Again, I was using that to freehand, but I mean it's a regular paint too. I just took a little bit of the white, changed it. So yeah, that's a little more subdued. Now we're brightening everything, and all of a sudden it was time to subdue stuff. We gotta hit some of these scales over here on this side. And I guess if you're wondering, oh, now he's got the OBS, is there going to be music and stuff? No, there's not going to be music. It's just, again, it's not something I want to be dealing with. And I just would have to talk over it anyways. And my voice doesn't really do well with talking over stuff. 
it has it can sometimes have a rough time surviving in total silence so yeah they're not going to be any music so if people are looking for music and fireworks and all that kind of stuff there's other folks that do that sort of entertainment me it's just going to be painting I'm just going to try and show you as best as I can how this process works now, this is another one clearly needs some brighter highlights there we got to reinforce some of the stuff that's happening up here on this hammer it, it is kind of an unusual shape I got it I gotta say that too it is a kind of a weird shape Yeah, we need to get one more light red. See again, it's another one. Look at those those strips like that. What well, could be this design reflecting up onto his leg? There's a million different things that could be reflecting there and creating that effect. Just something you want to keep in mind when you are trying to do this sort of thing with your non-metallic now. If it's not going to be shiny at all, it's going to be very, oh gosh, what would it be? Call more of that that buffed steel, right? Uh, then maybe you don't have as many of these type of bright effect, but it still is going to the color of the sky is going to affect it. If he's wearing some kind of a red jerkin or something like that, or, or blue padded armor underneath it, it's still going to have an effect. Just maybe not as much of the surroundings reflected on it, so that would be different. There. Yeah, that's now, see, that's one where I definitely have to indicate my apex there. And again, try to do some of those, that chain of highlights thing. Have to say, then these guys here, that this particular pose, the mask, where the, the mold lines ran and stuff, really just went right up to that mask and made it very difficult, very difficult to manage. How many more of these guys? We have a couple of more to do with our brighter highlights here. Yep, we definitely need to do our little chain of highlights here. So we're going to take this down to here. Oh yeah, this definitely, I can see we have a few areas here along this along that gauntlet there. Definitely needs it. Even a few spots on the helmet. There's a bunch of filigree on there that I basically just let that alone. Aha, uh -huh. once again, there is no chain of lights here, and we're going to do that right now. I think what I had done was I just, I gotten kind of frustrated, and I just went in with a very dark glaze in there, and just kind of wiped everything out. Just in that one area. And that we're gonna we just walk that highlight down a bit. We're gonna get some of our again some line action going there. You can see how we've got the the yellow reflecting over there. We need reflections in here, so we are gonna take some of that that blue here. That's the blue liner mixed with the white. There we go. Yep. See how that just... And the reason that's there is because you've got... Basically these bits of the scale mill there. They're, they should be reflecting onto the chest plate here. At least a little bit. At least a little bit. There's some more of our... That's the Bright Ivory again. It's Creature Caster slash Pro Acryl slash Monument. The, the Paint of a Thousand Names, as I always say. 
it's just so many people will say, well, that's not that, it's this. I said, well, look, it's, go look on the Creature Caster site. That's where, it, that's where they sell it. So that's why I call it Creature Caster Paints. Yes, I know it's it has another name on the jar. All right, good enough there. How's about now? This one, that one's pretty good on its brightest lights. Get some filigree on the helmet. Needs to be taken care of. See another case here. Like I said, we got that yellow on his foot there. Do I need any more? Aha, uh -huh. yeah, on the hammer I do. On that hammer. Oh yeah, we need some filigree and some other touches here. So, some of that. And then, and a couple of those lines. So basically, let's say that's this reflecting on there. Just a, a series of reflections just shown by those two little dots there. So let's grab one that's the same pose here. I think that is... Aha! Uh -huh, here it is. So you can see we got these two guys here. What we're going to do is grab this guy here on the right and we're going to try and make them look like, well, you can see, got the reference right there. I'm going to grab me something to drink here real quick. And I apologize if I did that right in your ear. But let's not forget, let's not forget some of that. Yeah, that is the, that's your faded ultramarine right there. Can't forget that. That's an ideal sort of a purple-blue. Now, this is another thing I'm going to test. If I need to, say, go find something or maybe do a little bathroom. So I haven't had a screen like that before, so hey, why not? Now we are going to go back to a more typical larger craft brush. And look at this. We're gonna, Remember I was talking about some green. You said, wait a minute. Yellow doesn't have green in it. Well... If you're going to have all of that blue armor around there, you're going to want to have you're going to want to have some blue in your shadows or something blueish in your shadows. Now, because we're just doing a couple of these at a time, we'll be able to actually do a little bit of more of a wet blending type of a thing here. You can see how wet that paint is. Because we threw some colors out there, it's almost like we're working with oils. It's not quite, because really, you get to do this on one figure. Because this, this paint's going to be drying. Now, I may paint that third unit, the guys with the two hammers, and maybe even the second warden unit. I'm thinking about doing those with oils, just because... It's actually more fun and easier. I just wanted to get these guys painted here. B basically to retrain myself and what colors these needed to be for doing that, the warden's unit. So it's just kind of reacquainting myself with these guys here. But then when I go to do the, and see we're trying to reflect some of that yellow there. And again, if we can work fast enough with a big enough brush see we can start to do some of that wet blending stuff which is always fun always gotta remember carry that on to the armor I know I'm gonna say it over and over and over again but even today I got a whole bunch of questions on oil painting stuff and it was things that I say in every single oil painting video over and over and over again. So clearly, I need to continue repeating things. Now, 
you know, is that's not going to get quite so much of a yellow reflection because, well, it's sort of pointing towards the sky. So that bit is going to get more of a sky color. A little bit more of a sky color. So you can see here, it starts to... Everything starts to... And look at how this yellow by itself has the ability to do some decent coverage. So look at that. Most people would say that they would not suggest painting a yellow over a darker yellow. They would probably say, wow, you probably wanted to glaze the the darker yellow over the lighter stuff. No, nah, this, this here stuff really covers good. So you can do that. And none of this actually has to be super smooth because we're going to be going back in with actually a touch of green little bit of a touch of green there. Now we'll show you so you can see how already just in a few seconds how far we've come. How's about a bit more a bit more of my yellow here. Then maybe we'll we'll jump on the other one and do that yellow since we've got the yellow going. That would basically conclude all of the yellow that we needed to do for the entire unit. How's about that? Get a little bit down in there. Now if I add just a slight little touch of that bright ivory, my yellow gets a little bit lighter even. Got a buckle to do there. I'm just going to make sure I hit some of that with yellow. I'm going to go over to the back of his cloak, robe, whatever you want to call it. His dress. I don't know. I'm sure there's a, there's a medieval name for it. And actually, I did just locate as a... Oh, that was the other thing that I've been doing... Well, the last two days, no, the last three days, is a massive studio rework. And part of it was, I mentioned it earlier, that the monitor is raised and in a slightly different place. The lights are a little bit different. I actually did put a different light here. So there's, there's going to be some things that are different. For me, you guys really won't notice That is uh, something, though, for all the folks that are thinking of trying. Oh, uh, we have a quick. I missed the yellow. Yeah, it's the. It's just a couple of quick thing. It is actually one of the newer ones. Where'd you go? Yeah, it's uh, this right here, the dark golden brown, which is. I mean, it's just like the sepia liner. Oh, do I have the sepia liner color here somewhere? Boy, I wish I. I wish I had that. Uh, oh, look at that. So yeah, sepia liner. I'm always trying to find equivalents because not everybody can get everything. So let's see just how um, uh, fairly close I would say they're darn nah. This one's a little bit lighter, the the pro acryl version there, and then we've got just the some of the yellows. I think it's called golden yellow here, and that is a uh, faded yellow, something like that. Just a couple of, oh, yeah, and I always forget, there is some of their little dress that just kind of shows right there. I had basically done all of this stuff on essentially, well, ten of them or so, or nine of them. Never realized that that was actually there, so I had to go back and do that. Again, going to reflect some yellow here. Some more. Yeah, another thing that, that that freehand can actually help you do it's it's something we always used to do on vehicles. Let, let's say the 
there was a funky mold line or a darn thing just didn't fit together the way you wanted it to. Land Raiders were always pesky for that kind of stuff. And we would just either put, well, you would put the chipping and the battle damage stuff, but sometimes that was a little bit on the obvious side. So that's when we started putting freehand there. And we had just some standard freehand that we would put in every area where that stupid thing just did not want to go together or it was just too much of a pain or whatever. And, of course, everybody thought, oh, that, that's amazing, that looks fantastic. But really what it was was just to cover up something we didn't want to deal with. And I know that back in the days when we were doing a lot of 40K stuff, Kathy and I, we both we were both doing that. We said, man, we're not dealing with these crazy mold lines or where two pieces, you try gluing them together, you practically put them in a vise and they just really wouldn't stay together the way they were supposed to. So we said, the heck with this. Now this is one where we definitely want to get that yellow reflected there. And I'll show you, where's the one with the same ears as this guy? So see the, the yellow reflected there on his? Yeah, it's just, it's amazing. And I've intentionally tried to tone this thing down there's there's been times where I said oh my gosh this is covering too much there aren't too many times where with something that's yellow you say oh come on man I don't need you to be covering that much I think uh, imperial fist players everywhere are just got, oh you know what that I think uh, the first primaris marine chapter we have to do might just have to be imperial fists just to show the, this whole thing with the yellow here. Uh, because if Imperial Fist players actually watch that thing, they there may not there may be a shortage of every yellow pro acryl color after that. I don't know how that just it's covering right over this really dark I mean, that's really dark blue there. It, it's covering right over the top of it. Even if I didn't want it to, it would, which is just hilarious. And again, we're just kind of approaching this the way we would our oils, not really washing the brush or anything like that. So that's interesting. Well, I'm not going to No. Well, let's see. Oh, the Twitch channel is it? Oh, it's locked in place. That's why. I'm just uh, gonna see what I can. No, that's not gonna do it. Well, interesting. Well, we'll just go with what we got there. I am gonna lock that though, because I don't want to have to screw around with it anymore. Don't want to have to mess with it. But we're just gonna continue again. Look at. We'll just. And this is the only pose out of, I think there's usually three poses and there's four of each. It's, it's one or the other. There's four poses, three of each, or there's three poses and four of each. I think it's three, three and four. Three poses, four of each. And this was one that just, did, the, the antler things didn't really thrill me. It was it is a bit more of a an aggressive pose than say some of the other ones but the of actually i think the baratheons here these were the first ones that were difficult to rank up now i'll show you the pyromancers as soon as i finish i think with this Yellow, I just want to see if I've got the Pyromancer's picture. I think I put those into this. Oh, my scenes and everything else. Yeah, yeah those are, i got to remember, the sleeves are yellow. Keep forgetting that. You can see I let the brush kind of do a little bit of a filbert thing there. All the while, just keeping in mind that there's going to be freehand over the top of that, so there, there's a lot of times where you can save yourself some 
some blending time by throwing some freehand over the top of it. Now this is for, for those of you that may be watching, what do they call them, VODs or something like that. This will obviously be up a couple of weeks or so. There's no real regular Twitch time. I've, there's too many other factors. There's well, there's all the videos that I'm filming for the Patreon page. And if I'm uploading a video there, there is not enough bandwidth. Not enough bandwidth in the universe to be doing one of these and doing an upload. So I'll do these when I can. So I cannot say on Tuesdays at such and such time, whatever. Because I also still want to do my YouTube live things. And that is something that you, know, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel now there. You can watch as many videos as you want. It doesn't matter how old they are. They're all still around. So if you're catching this for the first time, then... Head on over to the YouTube channel. Maybe not right now, but at some point, head on over there and do the subscribe thing, and then you'll know when I'm doing my YouTube lives. They have a tendency to happen at the same time as this. So, just so you know, again, Kathy does her streams during the day, so that already wipes out during the daytime, and there's a lot of other things going on during the day that just make it a little bit too difficult for me and the early evening time well that's typically when I, I start to upload files which means this time is when I get to do my typically my live stuff it's also the time I record my patreon episode so that's another Another reason why I can't say I will always be on at this exact time on this exact day. The, the Twitch thing for me it is just a. Uh, it seems like there's some folks that maybe don't always do the YouTube thing and they're they do more of the Twitch stuff. It's also something like this where I'm working on multiple things and the project is already well underway. I try to do more of straight up tutorials for the YouTube channel as opposed to more of something like this where I'm just kind of chilling and painting a whole bunch of figures all at the same time. This basically is more of a normal late night session for me. Okay, so we're going to go back to this first one here, do a little bit more in the way of the lights, and then we'll get to our blue-ish armor. And I do think I remember put the... Oh, we have Kilbasita, uh, kil kilbasita okay. Oh, and hello from Belfast. Now, yeah, see, that the whole the, the remote working and all that kind of stuff. Well, good, good luck with that. I will hopefully catch you on the other side of that. I let's see if it's 3:08 in the morning here. I think you guys had your daylight savings time. It's got to be at least nine in the morning there. Or is it 10? No, no. I think it, it would be nine for you guys. And just a little bit of the yellow reflected there, and then we're gonna we will move on. Moving on over here. Got some of the faded ultramarine in there. We mixed some of the blue liner in there. Because we also need some darks. Just looking for any areas where there's just a little too much of the yellow. Go on over to our other one. Now I'm just going to push some of these other guys out of the way. That was the thing that was interesting about the 
Baratheons here is first that all the armor had sort of that purple coloration to it, but then it was it was definitely on the darker side, I have to say. Now let's go a little bit lighter in the form of some of that faded ultramarine. Oh Kilbasita is actually Kilbit CTA one oh two, but Twitch broke it and it ah it's just after nine AM. Actually the reason why I didn't want to say CTA is because public transportation here is quite literally called the CTA, Chicago Transportation Authority. So that was that was why I was trying not to give you the CTA there because I didn't want to name you after a transportation authority. But there you go. And boy, well, I don't ride it anymore, but when I worked downtown and went to school down there for, well, nine years combined. I rode the CTA every single day. A bus to a train to downtown every single day. But then, uh, in the mid, well, we'll just say it. Eventually, I stopped working downtown. We won't, we won't slap a date on that. We'll we'll leave that a mystery. We we won't get too precise there on any kind of dates. But best of luck on the call there. I hope it's not too too mundane ish, or maybe it, it, maybe it could be, and then you could actually just kind of uh, oh I don't know daydream about the next color scheme on the next army because that is sometimes that is the most exhilarating part of an army painting project where you're just considering what what do I want to do with this what do we want to do with this army here do I want to do a whole bunch of freehand all over it is that going to be too much do I want snow theme lava theme fire theme Sandy bases, stone bases. I think for me, geez, that the basing is almost more than just the, the color scheme itself. I just the, the basing means an awful lot. Well, as you can tell, I mean, anybody that knows me and my stuff, you know that the bases really are. That's my thing. I just I love doing the bases. And actually, after I do this last little bit of the faded ultramarine here, that's actually, well, we can bring up the, the Lannisters again. I think the Pyros might even show it better than the Halberds. The, the impact that basing can have. Here, let's just, for right now, say we're good to go on our Beat ultramarine there. Just real quick, let me go to aha. to my boom test scene here. I'll see what kind of transitions are available because, again, I'm used to XSplit, which has just a default little fade instead of just boom, boom. That, that's a little bit jarring, a little bit sudden there. So I'll try to find a, a little more gradual fade. Let's get some always thinking about where my reflected lights got to go yeah see here we had none now we have some and now we can start to we can start to inject a little bit of lightness into this and boy it, look at that it doesn't take much that was just the ever so slight 
tiny, tiny, tiny bit of that, is that the bright ivory? And it already, it just, it really changed that faded ultramarine and really lightened it up in a hurry. Get lots of filigree. This particular pose, I think more than any of the other ones, has lots of filigree, a whole bunch of filigree on the, on the helmet there. I'm tempted to make this one step closer as far as zooming in on it. But I think I'll leave that where it is because sometimes, yeah, you're closer. It's a little bigger on the screen, but the focus just gets a little weird. It actually gets almost grainy. Again, I have to make sure that I leave enough space for some of that the yellow reflections. I even have to think about reflecting the floor. For the, for the most part, the floor is that dark blue, really dark blue. But there are some cases where there is a design there. And that's something I have to think about. It depends which way is the armor pointing. If it's pointing down at the floor, well, then it's going to get that darker coloration. That's just how it is. That's what you just call physics right there. And I think you can see how this really starts to change. We're already starting to work in those, those linear effects there. So let's get a bit of, yeah, I needed some more light up on that shoulder there. And believe there's there's a ways that we can go yet with our lighter colors here. So now this is the other thing, too. It's all about context. You, you can see that there's no primer exposed anywhere. That's all. That gets covered up right away for the folks not familiar on how this here process works. Now, first thing that happens, primer goes bye-bye. It just gets wiped out. If you're looking at how maybe they started, that is how they started. So there's your wardens, and you can see you got the, the same basing running through them right there. Now we'll move on to our our crouching guy over here. I'm just glad that this worked and at least the, the, all the, the microphone stuff and sound stuff is, wasn't too weird. Because you never know, oh my gosh, first time we tried doing a live stream on the Twitch thing with the previous program, there was just reverb all over the place. But I guess, uh, geez, even someone that my wife listens to all the time, he's been doing this for many years, and all of a sudden people told him that there was something horribly wrong with his sound. It was the same stuff he'd used forever. All of a sudden it just decided to act weird. So here again, we're even though this is more broad than that specific chain of lights like what we had here, I also have to think about that over here on the back. And again, there's their... You can see the effect. That's just a, the slightest bit of white in there. It's all it took. And even that's not a white. You can go more white than what I did. That bright ivory is not even, it's the pure, I think I call it pure titanium white, which makes sense. I mean, titanium white really don't get much lighter than that. But that's the one thing you will find out if you're new to this. There's really, white doesn't get used very often. And if it does end up out there, it is 
mostly in those closing phases after we've done everything else because if you jump right to that highlight color it's kind of like anything else I mean you got chocolate chips why not put chocolate chips in everything I mean who wouldn't want chocolate chips in everything well maybe could be questionable choice in pizza or a taco unless it's a oh, an ice cream taco every the most ice cream jeez when's the last time I had that I guess this, the jumping of 40 degree temperature, believe me, two nights ago, the last thing I was thinking about at all was ice cream or anything that involved ice. So we can, and you know, so I'm just using a beat up old, look at how gnarly and nasty that thing is. Because, in effect, and those, again, familiar with how I do things, they've heard the shaded base coat phase. This literally, to me, is still just a base coat. And for most people, like, no, this is half done. <laughs> no, to me, this is still a base coat. We're still blocking in, trying to figure out where those lightest lights are, where maybe some of that dark is. If, if you saw the earlier part of this when I was doing the freehand, well, of course, I had a smaller brush out there. It makes sense for that task. But here I'm trying to keep things open and loose and working fast. And tiny little brushes, they don't do that. So let's see. I, I guess, oh, I think what happens is that the, what is that, the chat thing that's on my window that just sort of there's like a timer on that I'm gonna have to mess around with that because there's still plenty of chat over on the, the side over here I'm not quite sure why it's I think it just kind of advances <laughs> it's like a, a ticker or something oh that's Kenzie eat more ice cream in winter than summer well is it the is that the whole several months of uh, the darkness there and that that ends up being sort of the the comfort food there with the cabin fever I mean for me there's a, this love me some ice cream boy that would be very and I'm, I'm just looking at that faded ultramarine color and some of the colors here and all I keep thinking of is blueberry ice cream Heck, I just would, even a blueberry smoothie or something like that, that would work. Culinary topics usually aren't part of the, part of the ensemble here. But because there's, this is not the usual thing where I have a real specific, well, there's a mission here. I got to get all these darn things done. But generally, there is one figure, and it is just get this thing done, show everybody what the steps are. Here, I can be a little more chilled. As, uh, well, let's see, we're an hour and 20 minutes into this here, and we did all that freehand stuff, and all of a sudden now, these last two guys are pretty darn close. To where we started on these guys with doing uh, the freehand and such. Ah, just keeping the blood cold. Yeah, well, Kathy, I know, well, today before all the rain and everything else, she has been sitting out on the porch there and collecting rays of sun for some chlorophyll production, I guess. I guess, sir, well, she sort of waits for the concrete to get warm and then goes out there. But today it was so darn warm out there that when she came back in, she was actually cold. 
because, well, I'm pretty sure last night it was still only in the 40s. I know the heater was going off all night long. Now let's pop a little bit of a acid top edge on Mr. Hammer over here. Can, can always run back to that. Yeah, and there's, well, you can't see it. There's filigree over here. Of course, there's a big old kind of mold line wanting to run right through it. Going to see if I can't get some lights on that chest plate there. And now on his leg and foot, we're going to get our Again, chain of lights there, and then secondary one over here. Never used to think about that back in the day. Used to always just have that one, never had the secondary one. And that is a big thing with the, the way these shoes, well, the shoes, the armor on the feet is. Okay, I'm just trying to put some kind of hint of a reflection there. We'll do the same here you can see how few I hadn't even washed this brush I don't think after I was uh, working with my yellows maybe that's the 2d painter in me maybe that's the the oil painter saying ah just that just don't be a wussy don't clean the brush just whatever's in there go with it that's what it must be Now, it's not to say that all of the, the craft brushes that I've got are all beat up like this one. So that one's a little more beat up. We have some that are definitely more pristine. Let's see. Let's use one of these guys and see what the difference is. And you can see it's a little bit different tip, something a little more precise. Let's grab a touch more. That way you get the whole different look at how that tip is very different. So I have a whole bunch of these. Uh, they come in packs to 12 anyways. Sometimes they come in more uh, because different companies make these kind of things. And I think that the biggest they ever got was a pack of 30 or 36 or something like that. They were different sizes. That went from I think as small as a 6 all the way up to a 12. Still got those. Still got those brushes. Still have them. But here, now these are the classic green handle version here. But now these are, they come in a gray handle here. Let's, uh, it's even that the name is changed, but it's the same price. Five bucks. And you know, yes, what was I using for the free house? Using the, the Winsor Newton Series 7? Why the heck not? But I sure don't want to use a Winsor Newton Series 7 for all of this and just destroy it because you know, I don't just paint an hour or two a day or a week. This, this is what I do. Unless I'm moving furniture around like this week, this is the kind of stuff that I do for for starters 10 hours a day I mean that that's that's a light day is 10 hours the extreme days well you can get to 20 there's well there's days where it's been longer than 20 also but the the average day is at least 12 hours or so every single day you can you can have a 700 dollar brush not going to withstand that kind of punishment and why bother when I've got this that just, look at it, I'm almost practically doing freehand with it right now. Almost like I'm doing freehand. And the advantage is it's got these big old, oh, strawberry milkshake. Ah, I, I, I'd, I've, I'd practically take an asparagus flavored milkshake right about now. Something might smell a little bit funny an hour or so down the line, but I suppose it would be healthy. 
Let's see, a milkshake with a whole bunch of peanut butter cups thrown in there, like a Rocky Road milkshake or something like that. Still with my blueberries, though. I think I still want me some of my blueberries, even in that. Or just an all berry shake. Blueberries, strawberries, raspberries. Put every single berry you can find and throw it in the ice cream. So again, doing the little transition and then we can. Where's my blue liner over here sometimes you just have to go back in then like you do and go zoink like that and you just you use there's the the series 7 it's doing kind of what it's really meant to do and if you're going to do your, your most precise stuff with that it's going to last a whole bunch longer And it will take you less time because you're also not throwing a thousand brush strokes per square millimeter. And there's really not that many millimeters on these figures anyway, so as we add some darks. It's inch oh, okay, so it actually it's weird, it changes the color too of the the chat so uh, some at first it was uh, more of a like a reddish color and now the color is changed to green so i'll have to look at the whatever the chat thing is and do something with that but i'm certainly not going to do that right now not going to do that at this point Boy, obsession with milk, man. What do we have? Oh, well, no. We really don't have the stuff around here to do that. I mean, we got, we got ice. <laughs> we can do that. Uh, aside from that, we have a couple of really old, nasty bananas. And you make banana bread out of Of course, now that it is 80 degrees, banana bread is probably less fun than having ice cream. I was going to try and bake some Sculpey sheets, but that's just going to have to wait. I'm not baking Sculpey. And Sculpey clay, if you're wondering, that is... Boy, I wish I could just kind of wander over there and grab a few pieces of it. Oh, wait a minute. We've got it in here. So... Give me one second here. So the the green stuff roll texture roll here. In this case, that's what we used. But that is the extra firm gray Scopey. But you can see how the other side is just flat. That is what all of these decorative bases are painted on. Just a flat Scopey. Now that is the regular white Scopey that was used. So just a little note there. The extra firm gray Scopey, completely ideal for the green stuff world texture rollers. The white Scopey, not so much. That's going to get stuck in your rollers, especially the warmer that gets. And it can get warmer just by being worked in your hands. The heat from your hands, the, the, the friction that builds up as you work it, it actually starts to build up heat. And I've got a ton of tutorials on working with the Sculpey Clay. Many more as part of the, the Patreon page, but there's definitely there's a how to bake your Sculpey. That's just a regular YouTube episode, and I guess I'm going to have to... I, I'm so used to doing YouTube Lives, I said, why the heck would I put my YouTube channel on there? But I'm actually going to have to have a YouTube thing on here that says subscribe to the YouTube channel. Maybe, I, maybe I'd make a little button thing that uh, does something. But in the meantime, 
You can see I got my, again, my Windsor Newton Series 7 out here, and we're starting to do some of the more delicate things. Getting that caught up. And now here, let's see the difference between our, our two guys here. So you can see this guy on the right that has his brighter elements worked in. And the one on the left that we sort of basically stopped at. We stopped right at the faded ultramarine stage. So maybe we work our way back to him after just a couple of more lights there. Again, with these figures, there can be a little bit of mischief that happens. Just with the, the mold lines and where they are placed, not always super strategically. And that, that's just so that they can make them, well, one, essentially one-piece figures. But there are some poor folks that actually have to glue these things together. Because I'm sure when they're made in the factory, they are not one piece. Let's see, look at the, the difference here. Again, this is a, practically a brand new craft brusher. So you're getting to see what that is like by comparison. Again, think and reflection, but that, I'm going to say this. See, that's not just darker. It's also got the yellow in there, too, that we're looking for. How's about a bit more? And yeah, a couple of lighter elements here. Again, there was a another sort of a mold line running through there, so we had to... Sometimes you just got to make a decision and say, you know what, we're just going to file away the detail and then paint it back in later. Yeah, letting some of that bright ivory work its way into the faded ultramarine. And this this is one over here where because of the way that the thing was cast, there was almost like a little bit of a double printing over here on the Shoe. So that's another one of those things that I'm just going to have to figure out some way of managing that. You also had a mold line here that runs right through that uh, scale mail there. Not, not the handiest place for one of those to be. But uh, again, you if this was a uh, let's just say it was a Sigmar figure or something like that, you would have your instruction manual out and there would be at least 15 pieces to this thing. So it's... There are trade-offs, convenience. It also makes it... I don't want to say indestructible. You step on this thing, bad things probably going to happen. But certainly a resin figure would just be way more volume. You just drop it on the floor. That would be the end of it. These, you can sort of drop them on the floor, and they have a ch good chance of surviving undamaged, actually. I know because I've done that, well, both accidentally and sometimes on purpose. For those times when you want to shock and horrify people and try and show them just how durable the figures can be. So just as we did with the, the other guy, we're thinking that chain of light all the way down to the end of the chest plate there. Thinking about some lights up here. Now this, I would have loved to do some of that that Sky Earth stuff that you saw on the halberds. But the, the goal here, or well, the requirement was that we stick as close to the box art as possible. And that's what we're doing here. We are painting up the box art. It's That is the, when you're doing the commission painting thing, those 
sometimes you just have to do what you are instructed to do and even though if you might want to try these I guess green right is for so there's like Renly and then there's the other guy Stannis or something like that and depending on who follows who it's either green or it's yellow and I guess some are they have black armor too or something like that I guess there's I, I'm not I never actually watched the show or read the books so I've just kind of had to do all of this blind now the reason why there's mostly sticking to the box art because it's a little bit easier that way and you can see I can still even do some relatively precise moves here with the with mr. brush now this is another thing that you you kind of work the brush uh, long enough until you can get one of these here always works its way loose and then you just snip that off and then it should be good to go but you actually have to just keep working the brush to get that thing out of there it's the, the darndest thing I have no idea why not quite sure why but that's just uh, the nature of it there now here again since we've got crazy little miscast thing going there I just have to sort of force the issue with the paint there's not much of a line to go with there I'm actually sort of enhancing that line a little bit that's mostly painted on that details not necessarily there it, it's another one of those things like remember we were talking earlier about the the vehicles and and you do the chipping in some places where it didn't glue together the way you wanted or just something weird happened and you create something that's actually fun to look at but it kind of serves that dual purpose of a distraction Now we're we're getting into our lightest light here. Yeah, thinking about my chain of lighter colors, it was right down, even onto almost said a few parts of his axe. I guess we're getting tired. Not that we had a whole bunch of sleep last night. And it's fun when you do these multiple chains of lights down there like that because it does start to basically say, you know what, there's some kind of terrain around this guy. There's a reason why it's not just... Because we used to do the armor and it was, it was shaded very nicely, I guess. But it was shaded, it could have been wood or cloth or, or something like that. It really was not any kind of steel polished steel burnished steel any kind of steel it's really more just all right yeah, nice shaded surface but other than that not much of an effect on it not quite like here and over here I see we need some trying to get some of those lighter highlights in here we got to have reflected light in here and that's what that's what our blue liner is going to do so again, it's reflected light but without without being too bright it's, it's that it's a tricky balance it's one you get used to I, well, I wish I had my that book that I just found as I was moving furniture around today. It's again, it's a, it's not just a book on medieval armor. Because a book on medieval armor where it's just like in a museum hanging on a wall, that's not going to help you. You need basically either, like me, you look up on Instagram and you find costume folks that have the full armor and they are out in the woods. They're out doing stuff. You will be amazed at the things that reflect 
on that armor and that there's the colors and the the backdrops and all this crazy stuff that reflects on that armor it def it completely changed the way I approached and thought about the non-metallic metal stuff that's for sure I looked at that and I said no no I've got a I got to change the approach here cuz there's all these really nifty things going on Now I'll show you here kind of the horizon line a little bit but then when I started to see actual guys in the woods walking around with the plate armor and I said aha there is way more stuff reflecting on those guys than I thought than even I thought and I I liked you know me I love me some reflected light yeah so here's another thing too so this is basically your dominant chain of lights this one not so bright if they were all exactly the same there wouldn't be any turn at all it would just kind of look very flat don't want that so you can see we are able to do some pretty darn precise stuff even with a basically a 30 cent craft brush right here Yeah, we're finding ourselves some highlights over there. But I think I'm going to go back to you know, our, our blue liner here. Just going to see if I can't draw in some of the plates here. Again, the, the cast was a little bit wonky, so we're going to try and clear that up here just with the brush. Now yeah, we've we've added plenty of middle tone and light. Here is it. Now we're going to go back in with some of the darker zones here. And it does a couple of things. It's going to make when you add darks, then your lights just get lighter. And it's it's interesting. I've seen people just keep adding lights and light lighter colors, and they don't add anything that's darker. They could have saved themselves a whole lot of time, a whole lot of misery. They had just gone a little bit darker instead of insisting on trying to keep making it lighter and lighter. When they weren't going to actually get to do that, I mean, at a certain point, the eyes is not going to see any difference. So here is where, see if we add that dark in there, now all of a sudden our light becomes that much lighter. I think you can, yeah, you can see that. And we can, yeah, so we'll do a little bit right there. So we're just sort of kind of creating some more shape. Maybe we're going to do just a darker thing right there. Right in there, too. We need some on the helmet. Just think of what these looked like not all that long ago. They were basically barely more than primed. And it did not take very long for these guys to advance. Which is why now I'm thinking I'm in a really good frame of mind now to get back to the Baratheon Wardens there and finish those guys off. So, now we've got our blue liner out here. Let's see if we can start to do some of that same freehand stuff that we did on the other guys. 
I'm going to do that same double stripe here. And sometimes in the, the shadows there, I just let the just let it die. Because if you try and make that just equally as intense everywhere, it becomes just too painfully obvious. Sometimes the suggestion of freehand is better than having the actual freehand. That's a lesson that I learned the hard way. Yeah, that wasn't very fun. So as I I just I see some things around here. So you know what? I think I'm gonna darken that, create a little more contrast somewhere. Now where's our other guy? Here he is. We have to do a similar thing to him. We also need to do a bit of freehand here on his cloak. This one's a tough one because there's this weird dip right there. And you can always tell when these things are, when there's a little bit of digital sculpting going on because sometimes you have that kind of a dip like that. It's just a weird artifact. We're just, we're so used to the different types of sculpting. It's really easy to spot digital sculpts. And well, since we also know the folks that sculpted these, it's that's another little kind of obvious sign. See if we can't sneak in our double line here. I'm just trying to work this darker blue down in there. Just get a little separation, that's all. And we got to do our, remember our diamond shapes there. Oh, I see. I forgot. These. Got to do those too. Oh, and I can see I need some darks on this one here. Interesting. So we'll just complete that little bit of freehand. I mean, when you're doing this many of them, that's bound to happen. But effectively, it's just like a little bit of a trio of leaves there. And let's do some of those diamond shapes here now. Actually, I'm going to use my other one. like so start off with the diamonds and then we do that sort of semi connection between them you can see also that the the paint's not fully covering because we have it watered down and that is sort of the goal there It's another nice thing about the blue liner is that it can be, you can water it down a fair amount, but it'll still, it's not going to run all over the place because there's other paints where if you put some water in them, you, they just, okay, they're, they're okay for a glaze, but you could never really paint freehand with them. So that's something to think about. And I believe it is still the case. Well, now it's kind of always the case, but... Reaper doesn't really do a whole lot of shipping overseas. I guess they, well, they must ship things overseas, but it's just really hard. It seems hard for folks to get Reaper paints. That's why I've been emphasizing those way less, because I really love the, the clear and liner paints. But as I said, they're kind of hard for people to get their hands on. I'll do this guy too. Again, starting out with our diamond shape here. 
let it mostly connect to our parallel lines. Now I also have to start basically setting the diamonds on their side because see yeah, it's getting it has to be stretched a little bit here. We have to elongate those diamonds and then this one could be a little bit more normal right here. Another thing to think about when you're doing your freehand pattern is okay, yeah, you got this nice big old cloak. I want to put freehand on there. What's the cloak like? Does it have undulations in it? Is it more of a straight cloak? Those those are things you're going to want to think about because I'm going to look for some of my Let's see. Here we go. So there's some freehand here. Now you can see this cloak is much more open, right? So I could go really wild with that. I could put the eye on there. I could put all this other stuff and it's not going to look too distorted by comparison. Now this here, see how it starts to flare out like this. This does not have, it has a little flaring over here. Now you notice that's why it just the, it's a much more generic pattern over there. Now this would have been much more difficult, the, the base texture there. I did that stuff that you see on the base because, well, that was that was perfectly flat. Made it a whole bunch easier. A whole bunch easier to translate that. Uh, let's get my last little bit of uh, these little designs in here. We almost forgot again. And then I'm going to go back into here again with some of those so the chain of lights, we also have to do that with darks. And what you're basically reflecting is that maybe it's the hammer that's reflecting on the armor. There's something that's reflecting on that armor. Something reflecting there that just makes that part darker. Don't know what it necessarily is. Now here, that dark is just you can't just have that sitting there we got to do something and what we've done in the previous figures is we took some of our little bit of our off-white there mixed it with the blue liner and created a little bit of a middle tone here we can, we can double down on that maybe make it a little bit lighter and there we go and there's a I get some filigree there, so that just, to me, that's that works a little bit better. We got more filigree over here that has nothing on it. That's better. I can, oh, see, I've got some, I have to get the, my reflected light there. Because basically, sometimes the armor acts as a infinity mirror. And it quite literally just reflects on itself, which reflects back on itself, which reflects on itself, and so forth and so on. And then you just drive yourself nuts trying to do manage 20 levels of reflections. So again, all of those, think of these striations here as maybe there's, there's somebody next to them, whatever it is. Give that more than just, and I feel pain to say it, just more than just shading. Because non-metallic metals are more than just shading. So like here, okay, yeah, we want that to be brighter and we want it to get darker on the edge, but that's just too dark. It's gonna have, there's going to be something more there. So we, that's why we're going to, and not just an edge highlight, we are actually going to create more of a shape there. And we're going to do that here, too. Because the more... Even this surface here, it looks kind of almost on the flat side. Now, there's another color here that we also have to add that I added on the other ones that you haven't seen yet, and that's actually some purple here. Oh, it's just nothing fancy. It's just quite literally purple. <laughs> it's just... That's all it is. But we are going to mix this in here. I 
And there we go. So all we did, it's just a tiny bit there. Oh, God. Yeah, you can see it on this one. So see how there's some blue in there, or some purple there and over there. Now we'll do some here. It's another, it's a way to get another level of color in on this besides just the blues and bluish grays. So one second here, I'm gonna try and get a little bit, there we go. Try and get a little bit of purple right here on that hammer. And it's it's obviously we're we're toning it down, right? We need some on this side too. It's definitely gonna be helpful, I think, on their helmets, but right in there. So we have not changed how light or dark it is. It's not any different as far as light and dark. It's just got a little bit of a difference in color and it's another little fun thing that can be done. We're going to go boom. So we're going to make it black and white. And now you can't tell that that's purple right there. So the, the value is the same. Just like right here. So is that you know, let's give me a little bit more of the... I'm going to paint that in here. So you can see it's okay. Value-wise, sort of similar to what was there. But now we're going to bring that back. And now you can tell that there's some purple there. It's it's another thing that was in the box art. There was actually purple in the mid-tones. That's why it's going to go here on the inside of his knee. That's why it's going to go over here. That one, we still want to clean this up too. Again, this the Windsor Newton series seven. It can come out for when you've got a real specific task like this. But why, why wipe out your brush when you really just don't have to? Now. I'll get a little bit more. Yeah, see, that I got that yellow there reflecting this. I'm going to see if I can't. Yes, I, I can work a little bit of my purple here, even into the yellow of his cape or whatever the heck that is. I just actually, I just, uh, well, I made it public today. The the video on the mountain that rides so you yeah if you want to head over to the YouTube channel that video is now public it's my latest public upload it's got guess what black and steel armor and yellow cloak yellow everything so you can see how to deal with yellow on that one and you talk about reflections galore. Oh my goodness. There are reflections everywhere. So see we got a little purple in there now. So where's our other guy? Here we go. We need to do that with him too. And my target is right over here. So again, no different than that blue that was there, that bluish gray. However, see, so look at that. The no real difference in value. It's not any darker or lighter than what's there. Same thing over there. So look at how we've transformed the back of this in a real subtle way. But it's it's different now. But that was, we didn't change the value of any colors whatsoever. It's all still the same. We just changed whether it was more of a bluish gray or something more like this purple here, which we're going to throw right there. 
Not quite sure why there was all the purple in the armor, but that's how it was in the artwork. And that's what we got to do. We've got to get some back here. Actually, this is telling me just how relatively dark the blue is in place. Yeah, because th this makes it seem so light. We always talk about the context, all right? Boy, that makes it seem so light, but it's the color that's actually there is pretty darn dark, and that's that's good news. That's what we wanted. Throw a little bit of that over here. These are just little little accents here designed to just make it a little bit more interesting to look at. Now, when these guys are all ranked up, there, there's some stuff that you're just not going to see. And that, that is something we talk about in every single army painting episode. Also, okay, you can put that there. Will they ever know it's there? You can, you can do a lot of stuff. But if they don't ever see it, I mean, everybody's time is, is finite. So... That's something you have to think. Is it worth it to do this? Will, will it show enough to go through, I don't know, 20 minutes of figure, half hour of figure to get all of those done? I will throw a wee bit of the burnt sienna. I just, that's literally all it's called, is burnt sienna. I know on some of the, the other painting with the other colors, I'll say, oh, it's a burnt sienna color or it's an ochre color, and it'll kind of drive people nuts because, well, they don't really know what that is necessarily. Here, the names are the names. Yay. And I'm just going to mess around here with some leather-ish type things. And I'm trying to do something that's not just another brown or tan. I'm trying to almost go a little bit reddish here. Crazy little pouches only on this guy. This is the only pose that has the crazy little pouches. I don't quite know. It's almost like a Second World War Russian in his bread bags or something. I don't know what those are supposed to be. But it is, it's practically a dark skin tone. Again, another kind of a mold line was running through that area, so you can only do so much with that. I am going to go over to this one, though, while I've got this going. And you can see the difference that purple makes there really does make a difference. Now, I'm going to try and get a little bit of that into my gold. If you just wonder why was I trying to get greens in there, like in there, because we're reflecting this. And my favorite little exercise to do is have people look around at each other and say, okay, you are what you wear. So if you're wearing any kind of a black shirt or a blue shirt or something like that, doesn't matter who you are or what gender you are, you instantly have 5 o'clock shadow. If you are wearing a very bright pink shirt, you will have the whole underside of your face will now be very bright pink. And there have been times where people were wearing, well, that sort of bright neon green shirts, and they instantly were horrified because they knew if they were to look in the mirror, what would be looking back at them? So you are what you wear, and that, I guess, qualifies. That goes into life choices. And, and not all life choices are good choices. Lime green shirts, certain sports teams aside, can be an apparel logistical nightmare. So just something to think about when you are picking some clothes, <clears throat> picking clothes to wear. 
you are what you wear it will reflect onto your face which is why that dark blue that's got to reflect on the yellow because <clears throat> if you have a I don't care what color sweatshirt you have you can have a black sweatshirt if you're under some kind of greenish fluorescent light well your black shirt now looks greenish if you are by some kind of if they still have incandescent bulbs it's gonna have more of a yellowish look to it it's just the nature of the beast so again I don't have to add very much of the proacryl white to make things stand out now what do we want to do here on the also have to reinforce some of the darks around so we also need to work on that yeah there's we need to develop a little bit more here I almost call that an axe head but that would be a hammer I'm just gonna get something to drink here real quick sorry about that just gotta have something to drink to keep the voice going and now we'll just this that sort of fun part where you start to pick out well really bright highlights here so let's do that on these last two guys which we haven't really done yet always thinking about that chain of lights which means one of these has to be sort of a dominant right there there's your dominant light let's get some of the filigree here on his helmet and visor find a few more highlights here now I could never tell what these guys it looked like some of them were wearing gloves some of them didn't have gloves so we'll say we'll put those guys aside we've got to figure out what we want to do with mr. banner over there also so after I fool around with some of these highlights on here we've got to decide what are we gonna do design wise on that banner with all the filigree stuff it doesn't again it does not have to be a killer it doesn't have to be something super hard super complex We can just do the, the typical, that sort of forest floral theme. But you can see we're adding a couple of these brighter lights here. That whole chain of right down here runs all the way down. Runs all the way down to the end of his hand and then onto his hand. And then the head of that that hammer we got to some more lights to add then we're gonna go into the purple we had we did a little bit well I did not you guys I did a little bit of that purple like you saw me do on the two latest guys that we were finishing off here's a bit more I guess it's see like right here you can see some of that purple down there you can see some of that purple up here what we do need however yeah we needed some kind of a dominant light there now you can see here look at all the yellow that's reflected in the armor well we had to do that I mean that was just an absolute must with all of the the banner here and everything you can see it's reflected on his helmet I am going to go into some a bit of a darker that's my blue liner right there and we're also going to work on his diamond pattern here so remember we had just we'd set him aside so that we could work on the rest of the guys and we we started out with the this diamond freehand and all of the other ones 
Now up there, that's going to be a little different story. And here, I've got a bit of a challenge. He's literally got his uh, hammer set up here like a walking stick. However, it does get in the way of me trying to do this. So, if it's hard for you to see, I apologize. But it's just got to get done. That That's why I'm doing this kind of stuff here. Because, again, the YouTube channel, those are more oriented towards here. Let's get this one figure done. That's what we're looking to do. Now, now with this banner here, what do we want to do with that? Well, let's start on this side. Maybe it's going to be easier for you guys to see if it starts on this side here. Let's see if we can't start off in the corner here, just like we do on our, well, here. For those that maybe didn't see what we've been doing in these little corners like this. It's just a little bit of a sort of a leaf design. Let's do that in the corner. So we're just going to try and develop a some kind of a pattern. So we're just going to have a leaf shape there. It's very similar. Just three leaves. Then what happens? It's almost like a like a vine. And we'll just have a bit of a vine shape there and some smaller leaves off of that. Maybe some thorns. And I think there's yeah, let's go with a Let's see a little bit of a swirl to it there. Again, do some more leaves on it. And then you just you start to fill in the banner design here. And, and at a certain point then you just you know it starts to work with the stag. giving it a suggestion of thing and then too you can always tone it down you can like can just wipe the whole thing out if you don't like it you're not stuck with it so we'll do the same thing with our three leaves and then we'll just see what kind of viney type thing I know that's not really the most precise language in the world there. Viney things. We'll just we'll work in a bunch of little patterns and then if we start to actually paint the stag in once we do that we're gonna have a bunch of yeah we'll get some, we'll put some eyes on him too I think. Oh Drax is raiding with a party of 15. Hey there, Drax. This is, oh gosh, what is this, the fourth time I've done this, maybe? Maybe the fourth time. I've been in kind of, well, Twitch purgatory because XSplit decided not to let me broadcast on Twitch. So I had been doing a solid series of broadcasts, and then it all kind of went away when XSplit decided to not let me broadcast. Now, I, I don't know if it might be too old for those previous episodes there. But welcome aboard, everybody. I am Wapelius on Twitch here. And thanks for the raid. Thanks for joining me. What we've been doing is working on some Baratheon stag nights here. Now, what we had actually just done is on these two guys here, I was just showing people the effect that purple was going to have in the armor. So let's let's do a little bit. Let's repeat that exercise for you. You didn't get to see that. So we're working with the Pro Acryl paints here. 
We got your faded ultramarine. We got a little bit of purple. We've got some of the burnt sienna out here. But this is some of the purple here mixed with some of that faded ultramarine. And you can see it's this kind of a bright looking purple here. Now we're going to get this and we're going to throw some of this in our reflected light areas like that. Now the value of that, and this was a big thing, the value is about the same as what's there. But we're going to do our neat little trick here and bear with me while we go zoink like that. So now all you see is the value. So it still looks like shiny armor here. Still gives you the shiny armor effect, but now we're going to do this here. We're going to paint in black and white for now. And then we're going to switch back to living color right about now. And you can see we added some purple right over in there. And we'll do some more of that here. It's all about the reflected light the chain of highlights here that runs all the way down his shoulder all the way to the end of his arm and this purple basically it's it's essentially the accent color of the armor now I I had to do the box art colors now I just got a set of the Valerio fluorescence I've got those boom right here ah, there we go got those right there now I think oh yeah I use those on this that same fl fl fluorescent green you use that on her this is actually my very first army painting series man it's hard to believe I'm on like series 18 now something like that but I have been using these and I think you've seen these lately right the golden fluorescents here absolutely loving these guys I was introduced to them, uh, kind of pushed gently to use them. Well, maybe, yeah, relatively gently. And then I finally used the darn things, and I went, oh, yeah, I need to use these. But, boy, when I first found those, oh, Mega Hamster, Mega Hamster 7, how you doing? Ah, uh, Monument Transparency, a bit out of sight. Oh, you know what? Boy, I, I actually, I don't know if you've seen some of the really old painting pyramid videos, like from six, seven years ago, but I think I had, I had the clear red. That, that's what got me into the Reaper clears, believe it or not, was having, I, I liked the, the Vallejo transparent red, or no, clear red, sorry. Uh, eventually, I'll trying to get back to some of the Vallejo colors. I just I haven't used those in forever. Uh, I was supposed to actually get Oh hey uh thanks Mega Hamster. Oh yeah the uh oh, let's see what do I have? Oh I've got uh huh, Joffrey Baratheon. I've got him and well I did him as part of the what was that the Kingsguard, right? Yeah, it must be the Kingsguard. Yeah, yeah, because what's his name? Uh, J uh, Jamie Lannister's in that. I almost said Jeremy. Now, here's another place. Okay, this is another example of sort of that reflected light. So, see, I just added that little dot of reflected light there. We are going to. I'm going to get a little bit of that same purple in there. Now we're going to take, how's about some of our blue liner? So this is sort of a, it's more of an homage, I guess, to the Vallejo stuff. But yeah, the trans, well, that's why I started using the, the, the contrast stuff because people wanted, they couldn't necessarily get the Reaper paints. They were, I don't think the monument paints were even out yet with the transparents. So actually I did the the only other thing I could figure out and that was the uh, GW stuff. I wonder maybe I'll try and find the Vallejo transparents and give those a shot. Now how many do they actually have? 
because let's see reaper well now as far as the clear aligners go i want to say there's 10 of the clear paints and there's six of the liners green red yeah i really like my red liner too so yeah we're doing so we have the chain of lights but you're also doing the chain of darks there as well now this one we are gonna reinforce some of our darks in a few places like right there because I could I could keep going middle tone middle tone even lighter but sometimes you just got to go darker now here that needs something else that needs I think we're going to go with our white and blue liner mix there. Right about there. And might even go a little more. Might even go a little bit more. Yeah, so we're thinking these striations here. We're thinking those striations because that is just basically there's whatever it's the guy next to him that's reflected on a, a wall whatever is reflected on to him and i know i've said it a few times earlier in the broadcast but don't uh, don't think of the armor as like sitting on the wall of a museum the big transformative thing for me with how i saw the armor well, that happened when I started to see Instagram posts of actual people in real armor walking around in the woods, walking next to other people wearing armor in the woods. And since you guys haven't seen it, oh, I get to play with this again. It's one of my scenes here. So... broken and that really the more I started to look at actual people walking around in the woods that horizon line was massively broken in all kinds of different shapes and colors so hopefully that was fun for you guys to see that little bit of exercise right there and that that unit right there of the hobards that was Boy, that was one of my early army painting series. That was that was for the Patreon page. I think. Well, now that I'm on what series 18, my goodness, uh, I think when you sign up to the army painter pledge level, there's somewhere around 400 hours of videos that you are treated to watching, and I guess we have time to watch things now. But as you can see, yes, it's what I, I do for a living, paint lots of figures. But I have my own Lord of the Rings armies that I've got to paint. My own bolt action armies that I've got to paint. And all of these techniques that were designed for me and not just get those commission figures out there. But just to get my own stuff on the table so that I could do my battle reports and such. Now, we need more light. We need more of these highlights down in here. I have a light middle tone, but that's about it. There we go. And even on some of the scale mail, I could use some there too. How's about a bit more? Oh, thanks for the follow, Voodoo Von Acid Bath and okay that's uh i'm just trying to get caught up here all right i just see those three yeah i don't have the fancy 
bell literally bells and whistles i mean there are quite literally on some twitch channels bells and whistles and maybe fireworks too you won't be hearing any music on this because well you can see i'm trying to as best as i can make this a little bit of a tutorial here and for me having to talk over music would just be not fun for several hours because we're two and a half hours into this and my voice doesn't really do well trying to talk over music for that many hours so, so we're doing these little highlights focused more as dots focused more as dots because think of that that's your basically like your sun sunlight putting that little bit of a light highlight there so we're going to do the same here now that believe it or not that actually has to be a yellow pant so we are going to backtrack a bit here we've got some of that dark brown because we've already done that on some of the, the tunics here that I didn't realize were actually tunics. I didn't realize that that was actually just pants there instead of armor. So one of the colors that we were using was this. It wasn't the clear or the transparent yellow. It was just golden yellow. And man, that stuff, it covers. That is the thing about these, though. I have to say, out of all the paints these lighter colors man do they they cover like you wouldn't believe so let's get some let's get a little bit of yellow into here but as we do that I have to start looking around is there somewhere that I've got to get more reflections of yellow and the reason one of the reasons I'm pointing you to the YouTube channel is okay like right here can you see so yeah, he's got that yellow tunic there. Guess what? We have got to reflect that onto the armor right next to it there. You just you have to. There's no way you can have all that bright yellow color, well, any yellow color for that matter, and not reflect it onto the armor. Same thing here. See that? You see right there. We're reflecting the yellow onto the armor my my latest youtube video you probably want to check that out it's it's black and steel but it's also yellow and black and steel speaking of yellow i see another area here where i've got to reflect so we got a sleeve there there is no way that sleeve can be right next to this steel armor here and not be reflected on it so i just did a reflection there we are going to do a little reflection right there check out on the scale mail here there is yellow reflecting onto that and if folks got questions feel free to ask that is that's kind of why i do the live sessions is so that literally people can ask questions or do say hey can you show me those black and white that black and white thing again or can you show me the the picture of the halberds or the pyromancers or whatever again oh yeah uh, by the way that black and white thing that I was just telling you about uh, you should do that with your photos of your miniatures you can do it on your phone just kill the black and white or just kill the color we're gonna do that here right because when I do that you're gonna see zoom so this brightness is no different than this it's just that this is yellow and this over here is more of a blue so we'll bring back color intensity and guess what our yellow comes back now we've also boy that's gonna be tough to reach but we have to do it gotta get some yellow down in here so again Drax, thanks for the rate. Oh my goodness, look at this. So another place I forgot to reflect yellow. Okay, we got this yellow sleeve sitting right here. What's practically touching it? 
but a piece of armor which now has to get yellow on it. When people say, boy, Jim, you know, the non-metallic metal stuff, I don't know if that's for me. I don't even know where the colors go. And I said, neither do I. All I know is that the miniature is going to tell me, like right there, the miniature said, hey, wake up, put some yellow over there. You got a yellow sleeve right next to steel armor. How's about you wake up and get your yellow on that? So the the miniature will remind you, maybe gently, maybe not so gently. But again, thinking, I got yellow here because of my floor design there. Oh, and you probably haven't seen this either. So essentially, where's my, ah, here's a finished one. Now this is actually from a different movement tray, but you kind of get the idea of how that fits in there. You can see we've got that, that same sort of pattern that's working here. That's how your... No, these aren't Sentinels. They're the Super Elite guys. Yeah, these are the Stagnites. Stagnites, that's right. So actually, I've got to go through these kind of and do the double checking. Oh, yeah. here's some more. I forgot some here. Let's do it. Oh, boy. Yeah, somehow... It escaped me to not only do these sleeves, but I'm going to have to go back in here and do reflections of yellow somehow. We're going to, we're going to have to do a little bit of gymnastics here to get the brush down in there. And this one's going to be a little bit easier for you to see. So well, once again, we drop the yellow here because, well, yellow sleeve... But now we're going to have to reflect that. I mean, it's not much. It's not much. You can see it's just a tiny little amount right there. So, well, thanks for the hosting. Wow, that's, that's all so new to me. I'm going to have to... I'm, gonna, I'm not used to the, the nomenclature on that. Boy, there's always something new to learn. Oh, well... And look, I forgot to reflect yellow over here. So we're going to do that. But as I said, this was really early on in the, the video here. When you reflect something on the armor, or in this case of just like a landscape or whatever, the color that you reflect has to be more subdued than the color than the original color. It cannot be the same. It's a reflection. It's not a base, virtually a doubling of the original color. Any other? <laughs> I think this is, this. that's one of the problem child figures with the, all that yellow and stuff. Now we've got this guy over here. He's thinking of doing something more on the back of that cloak there thinking of doing something more. Let me get my uh, check out. So basically, maybe we'll put that on his cloak. That might be fun. So I'm just going to put this where I can maybe see it. Now we have to figure out just how how large this is going to be. Because there's nothing like doing this and then you just start running out of space and you go hmm okay maybe I should have made that smaller all right let's get the antlers going up here tail chest uh, let's legs but they've really got those Close to his chest there, don't they? And then back legs now. Like so. So front leg here are the hooves kind of pointed backwards a little bit.
And the back two legs, they're just sort of closely... Oh, here, okay, I can do this. And I think you can see that, too. Let's, uh, let's get this tail going here. I think we'll... Now, also, too, with things like... Look at how that's... It has to be distorted a bit, because you got this whole cloak doing this kind of thing. Fortunately, I can hold both of these in my one hand. Here, let's get the antlers taller here. And like I said, we'll just, we'll let this let there be that distortion in the cloth. Now, if I miss something in the chat, I apologize. This is this is a little bit of a tricky operation here, so I just want to focus as much as I can. And then we can maybe start to lighten some things up here. Oh, what the heck? Let's let's paint. <laughs> Let's paint two free hands at once. Let's do that, because that would be fun. Let's see. Ah, there. Oh, that's right. You got the crown. There's the crown on there, too. We got to think about. And I don't want to do too much of that because then it's not going to... I mean, it's supposed to be sort of, well, black. So let, let's work on our second one over here. Okay. It's really hard to tell the way that is. Which of these legs is actually out in front of the other? It shouldn't be quite so difficult to tell, but it is. So a little less just in that. There we go. Now, I'm going to see if I can't go a little bit lighter here on this one. Also, I have to start thinking, well, what part of this is down inside a, a fold as well? So lots of things to think about there. There's your, that's your crown. I'm going to think about just maybe a little bit of hair, some I think I'm going to separate that leg with a little bit more light, and then we're going to go back to our blue liner over here and darken down this rear leg here. Yeah, so since this is only, what, fourth time I've done this, actually, I don't believe... Yeah, there hasn't been any raids yet, so you are the first... Drax has done the first raid of the channel here. And I was glad that I just happened to look up and go, well, yeah, that's a that's a few more folks than were just there two seconds before when I last looked at this. Now again, we got this champion figure here, so maybe we do a little bit more. Just like we did on that banner over there. So we start to think of some... Something like this with some more leaves. Just trying to match some of what's going on there. Side by side miniature painting. Don't actually know if I've done this before. I've got to maybe I got to do this more often. I don't know if I've ever actually done this. 
this is actually kind of kind of fun to have two miniatures side by side like this. It's one way to get stuff done fast. Now, I, I can say if you go through all of the YouTube episodes that I've got, all hundreds of them, you're not going to see me have two figures in my hand at the same time. That's pretty wild. Here, let's get a couple of more little squigglies going on here. That's another highly technical paint term right there. Alright, so we've got our squigglies there. Let's darken up that leg, get a little separation. I, mean, I understand why things like that texture of the stag is sculpted into the banner. I know for me, my personal preference would be to maybe not have that so I could just do my own thing with it and not have to, well, file it away, because I've had to do that sometimes, too. Now here we're going to think about some more reflected light. That's the blue liner mixed with some of the white. And you can see we're just, so right there, you can see we've got the yellow that's reflected there. Some more reflected light. Now yellow again is reflected right there. I also need to, if that's just going to be a sword blade right there, we've got to do something about that. That's just looking a little bit too plain. Now let's see what happens when we lighten up our yellow a little bit here along the edge. But then also reflect it on the sword. So just a couple of brush strokes all of a sudden an area that was just kind of dead. There was not a whole bunch going on there. Totally different now. Much different. Sometimes it's not a bad idea to do something like that. See how the, the, the new uh, highlight went right through? Uh, oh, and okay, so Armored Wolf has hosted you. All right, that's pretty wild. I didn't... Oh, well, Kathy will tell me what a hosting is. She, she's all the, all the guru of the... She's the guru of the Twitch here. Me, I'm usually YouTube guy. That's normally where I dwell. Let's, let's make the head a bit smaller there. And I think we're also going to reduce that just a touch. So I think we're we're starting to get, you know what? I'm just I'm looking at the other one. And I can actually reduce that a little bit more. There we go. So I think we've got that a little more in line. Now, do I have all the... Uh, okay. I need to not only get my yellow reflections in there, but I need some of my darks too. I hope you can see that. And here we need some. All along here, we're going to try and dive into some of our, some of those final lighter highlights here. That's why I just, I keep the, the white at bay for as long as I can. Because once you've gone there, I mean, that's it. You can't go any lighter than that. You can go darker. But you're always going to hear me being real obsessed with the middle tones. People say, what the heck is middle tones? What's the deal with that? It's nothing fancy. It's just, let's say you've got a, a value scale. One's the lightest, ten's the darkest. 
middle well that's going to be in your four through seven and poor middle tone never really gets any of the glory he just he just does his work he just sits he does his work all the time never gets any of the credit the highlights and the shadows always take credit for everything and poor poor middle tone he just well, he's stuck there in the middle between light and dark and he never gets his due but he does here or she whatever because it is important it, it literally does a lot of the heavy lifting all the other stuff just kind of hangers on the highlights get all the credit and everything but there would be no highlights if there were no middle tones now speaking of middle tones we're gonna go in with some of that purple there and we're gonna try and see that right in there again another bit of a middle tone you can see how we've got our yellow reflected over here now at the same time I also have to think about adding some darks or have I gone too much too far and where things are like but see that's another one of those little again following that chain of lights down here I, well, I, I will give that a little touch of it right there now this is an area here it's there's not a lot of definition there we're going to try and get some definition on that right now right there top edge there but that's not all we need more that that whole thing of the chain of lights now we got to get something over here too like so all the way down here I want some more definition up here we've got I might have to put some more of the blue liner back out there back to some of that faded ultramarine again it's this really nifty again another one of the pro acryl colors it's a it's a fan favorite it's a definite favorite now I'm gonna go back to some lights here actually I see another guy that also could use some highlights so we'll after popping a few on here we're gonna go to that other guy right there see and it's not a solid line the, the line has a break to it that's really important because if it's just a solid line it's just gonna end up looking more like cloth than anything else not really like metal that's that little broken highlight that's what gives it that shininess or shine or whatever All right, so we've got our we got a little deer on the back of this guy here, and we're back to this one here. I think this is yeah, this is one of the last ones that we were fooling around with. We were going to give him some lights in a few areas here. Actually, I think I was, yeah, that's why I was working on him when all of a sudden a whole bunch of people walked into the house. Quite literally. How fun is that? And then we kind of went, oh, let's do this. Now here you can see we've got some little, whatever those are, we are going to work some lighter highlights. We've got the reflected light there. I think that edge needs, yeah, that edge right there need a little bit of a light. Aha, yeah, I think I also need to get some here on this shoulder right there. 
actually, I think I was right about here. I was, I was basically talking about that chain of, the chain of lights. And that Christmas light, well, I, I guess it kind of looked like maybe a chain of Christmas lights. It's not really what they actually are supposed to be. We are also going to. Uh, I know I talked about this earlier that even on a broad surface like this, you still got to find ways. You see how that works its way all the way down here to that part of the armor. It's real important that that happens. So we are going to throw some more of our blue liner out here again. There we go. And I don't usually work with a whole bunch of colors. For me, I, I like to mix. It's It's been a thing for many years. Now, yes, the 2D art part of it is involved. But I get interrupted and stopped on projects all the time. Sometimes it's months before I can get back to, say, something that was my own stuff. There's no way I'm going to remember any kind of what color was a layer or something like that, just the heck with it. Oh, because, well, here's an example. So this right here, speaking of Reaper Paints, was not all that long ago. This is how Reaper Paints, yeah, see, they didn't always come in this. They originally came in jars like this. And I don't mean 20 years ago, or even, I think, 10 years ago, they might have still been selling these bottles. I could be wrong. But when we started using Reaper Paints, that's how Reaper Paints came, not in dropper bottles. So just think about that paint change. Paints come, paints go. That's the nature of it. And if you have that knowledge of being able to just do a little bit of mixing, I don't, you don't have to match everything. But even just to, to make a, even potentially a skin tone or something here, let's see if we can't use some of what's here to manufacture a skin tone real quick. Oh, let's just grab a touch of that. I mean, it's just, we used whatever, we used purple, some blue, some white, and a little bit of sepia, and boom, we had a skin tone. As long as you got something that's red, and something that's a little bit yellow, and something lighter, you can actually have yourself some skin tones. So I know I keep throwing little lessons at you here and there. It's kind of uh, what I do. <laughs> the, the teaching thing, that's that's what I do. And it's been that case a long time. I used to teach 2D art. I used to teach watercolors and pastels and all that fun sort of stuff. Now I think my next, well... Never quite know what I'll be able to do next, but I think my next time here on Twitch, now that I know this works, is I don't know if you've seen these on my Instagram page, so check that out on the see it's the Instagram while Pelly is there. These are actually oil paints that I made, well mixed myself, and I took an entire all my Windsor Newton paints. And basically made the, put them in dropper bottles. And I think you can see on my YouTube channel, I've got one live session where I use those already. But I'll try and do a Twitch thing for you guys. So that you can check that out. So now again, we're back into... This is something that I was doing earlier here. It was actually kind of manufacturing an edge right here. It really wasn't much of a much sculpted there it just seemed to be neat to have that there so the more complex we make that the more interesting it gets you just don't want to go too 
berserk with that, I guess. It's, everything is a happy medium. Who knows, maybe that's where we get back into the middle tones again. Now we did our freehand there. Ah, we need a little bit of talking reflected light here. Now, is it going to get yet now? I don't think it's going to catch that yellow. Now this is, okay, so we're going back to our yellow over here. Can you see? Ah, I think you can see it. Let's see how we... It's not completely yellow, it's just basically this little line right here. Uh, can you see that? Look at that. That reflected onto there just makes that so much more interesting to look at. And it's carried all the way down across his shoe or boot or whatever. Might even get a little bit of yellow up into there too. Now can you see? Yeah, you can see. So there, we even got some purple there into our cloth. Let's play with a little bit more of that. I'm just going to grab something to drink again. going to do maybe not on that we'll do that on this one here so again we got a little bit of that purple in there let's let's do that again let's see if we can't do that again and I don't know maybe some folks haven't seen the brushes these are literally just 35 cent craft brushes here poof that's what they are, and yep, yeah, that is five bucks for twelve of these. And yeah, for folks that haven't seen me do this before, this is the kind. This is the brush that I use for the vast majority of painting. Look at that; it's got a nice point on there. It's got long bristles. It's it's soft. And now we just we inject a little bit of purple into our cloth there, just like we've been. And a little bit of purple into the armor, like so. Now up here, I'm seeing things that, you know, I got too many light things going on here. And I think it's time to just not only knock one down, but also throw a little bit of purple in there. Speaking of which, we're going to toss a bit of that onto those horns. A little bit onto the horns now. This is another area I think could use. Yep. Not just something that's lighter, but something more interesting. Something a little more interesting. We're going to do that here too. Even going to cover up a little touch of the freehand with it there. Because also, see it sort of tones down the freehand, knocks that down a little bit. Anywhere, yeah, let's do some here too. And oh my goodness, we have to definitely do something with the hammer over here. Okay, that has nothing much happening with it, so we're gonna put something on there. And I don't want to go too much with a highlight, but where's that central kind of a rivet right there? Good enough. Don't want to go too crazy on that. We did another little... I just kind of call those spectral highlights, basically. It's just a... It's a dot. That's all it is. Nothing fancy. Now, what have we here? Now, here, I'm going to actually go a little bit of the opposite way. I am going to take you towards more of a greenish look here. So go ahead, I'm taking my blue liner. And we're actually going to, there we go. So yes, that's yellow, but we're actually shading that with some green, especially over here. Look at this big old 
dark blue. Oh, look at there's your stag's head right there. And that's part of that entire, basically a marble floor. And I've got a whole bunch of, well, even my blog, which I don't think, yeah, on my YouTube channel I have my blog that scrolls by, but here I don't have a scroll. So that's Wapelius at blogspot.com. You can check that out. Here, yeah, let's get that. Just doing something in the, the glitter case. It's a little bit different. Now we are going to... That's just some burnt sienna there. We're going to lighten this up a bit. Just trying to create a space for myself. Now look at big old brush, right? Huge, gigantic brush. Boy, you can't do little tiny things with that gigantic brush. Well, actually you can. Because we've been doing that most of the session here. So see a little bit of a highlight that I threw on there. Big old brush. And yes, you can do some fine things even with a big gigantic brush. It can be done because well, I just sort of did it. Now, do we want to get some more highlights along there? And now, at, let's say, I'll, I'll just kind of declare this guy. We'll say, okay, he's done, right? Let's say he's done. He's got basically a little magnet on the bottom of him, of, of him here. And it tells me where he stands on the tray. Which is, we don't see where the tray is because I've moved everything around. But in any case, here, let's just, he would probably go right around there in the tray because you can see there's the antler. So this is the second, a second unit, but he would just sit there in his tray. He's done. I'm going to set him aside and now how closely. Did we mat that? So this was our color test one here. And here's our new one here. Oh, Charles Barkley's ghost. Why do they call it an Xbox 360? Because you'll see it turn 300 degrees and walk away. All right. Now, we're just looking over these guys here. We will say that he is completed two. I'm just going to get some of these things out of my way. But here, aha, uh -huh. see here I'm going to actually maybe play around with a little bit of the more bluish color here. Dual purpose because we're going to, I mean, look at that dark blue right there. We're also going to tone down that fan. See what that did right there? Almost dusted over the top of it. Tones that down. And I'm even going to have that go. See how that? It's, it's sort of like what you would do maybe with almost a tattoo, right? You would put some skin tone over the top of it and it just sort of sets that down. Look at that. Look what that did right there makes that turn a little bit makes it turn just there uh, see it just kind of cuts right through there now where's where's our banner there we go and we can do some similar things with that so that sort of tones some of that down again we can even get some of that right here. See, we did that here, right in this little, right in this little area here.